How's it going everyone? My name is Keenan and welcome to my channel where we're talking about personal finance, investing, real estate and today construction. If you're new here, I'm a civil engineer and I work as a project engineer for a general contractor here in Hawaii. I originally was going to take my talents to the design side of engineering as a civil engineering designer, but my internship that I did in construction really changed my direction and now I found the job that I love. So if you're trying to make that same decision or you're curious just about what construction people do all day, stick around and I'm going to tell you the 10 things I think is important to know that you're going to have to deal with as a project engineer. So number one, every single day will be different. You'll never be sitting at a job where like 7 a.m., 10 a.m., you know, 1 p.m., you do the same thing every single day for 30 years. So I'll give you an example. Last week Monday I was out in the field and I was trying to determine some floor heights. So here's a little bit of home building knowledge for you. When you pour a concrete slab, when you post tension the deck, you can't see it really with your eye but the actual slab is doing something like this. So what we were doing is essentially trying to find the high point in the floor because in a long corridor you want to know where all of your doors are going to be level to. So in layman's terms the floor is doing this and we want to make it a little bit flat so that everything can look aligned with each other. And after that, I went over to our model unit that we did, which is essentially a replica of what we're trying to build in the tower. But anyway, I was doing that in the field on Monday, and my Tuesday was completely different. My Tuesday was filled with meetings, I needed to meet with the owner on certain cost items, we needed to meet with our sub-trades because we needed to coordinate work, so it was more of an indoor day. So my 8 o'clock on Monday looked substantially different from my 8 o'clock on Tuesday. And that's going to be typical for almost every day as an engineer in this career. Anything can pop up throughout the day, so you need to make sure that you can adapt to make sure that you're helping the team out in the best way you can. So number two, you will need to be outside. Construction is an experience-based industry, so unless you had like a family member that was in the industry or someone that kind of taught you stuff along the way, Likely when you graduate college, you know absolutely nothing. Even if you have an engineering degree, you have to get it through your head that you're probably going to be the dumbest guy on the job. And how do you fix that? You stay outside and you figure out how to build stuff. It is nearly impossible for you to learn how to build if you're not outside kind of in the middle of the action. If you don't understand how to build, it's going to really affect you later on in your career. Because usually as a project engineer progresses, they'll become some sort of project manager. And at that time, you're more in the office and you're trying to build schedules, you're trying to help coordinate. And if you don't have that basic field knowledge, it becomes very, very obvious. You lose respect, you can't estimate cost well because you just simply don't know how to build. So I'll show you some examples about how knowing how to build really matters for you in your career. So you see how there's this exit sign here, which if it's illuminated, that means that there's some sort of power going to it, which means that that power is probably in this wall since I don't see any sort of conduit or anything mounted on the outside. So in that case, that means that you need to make sure that you coordinate this location of this exit sign before you even pour the wall. But one thing that also comes up too is that when you have an opening in a concrete structure, a lot of time this will be reinforced up here. So that reinforcing may conflict with where this power is going to this exit sign. So a lot of times you run into issues where this may get moved a little bit more just because you can't mess with the reinforcing that's here for the door. So stuff like that will always come up, like the guy can't put in his thing for the exit sign, so he tells you, what the hell am I supposed to do now or whatever, like, you know, this doesn't fit, your rebar is in the way, let me just cut the rebar, and you're like, no, 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 because you don't want this structure to fall down, yada, yada, yada. So those are the kinds of things that you can deal with in the field. As a construction project engineer, you won't only do concrete stuff, but you may also do finishes. So here's an example here, we're kind of looking at you have two different thicknesses of finished material and that's why you have this weird transition here with the base. So in a lot of these situations the worker will ask you know should I try to cut this one down to make it flush with this side or should this you know should we do something differently on this transition. Well that's something that you know they won't be able to finish the base until they get an answer to this question so you gotta get those answers quick. But I guess in this scenario they just were like leave it. Fine. So number three, there will be adversity. There will be some bull shenanigans and there will be stress. And it'll all come in different forms. So if you're in the field, the workers will a lot of times have questions for you. And if you're not prepared, they'll expect the answer almost immediately. That's why if you're not planning ahead and you're not doing a good job of setting up your workers for success, it can put you in a tough position when they need the answer right now. A lack of answer in the field means that work cannot progress, which means that you're losing money and you're gonna go over your budget. So there were times when I first started out, there was a worker that said, hey, I need an answer on this. I need to know where this wall ends. You gotta figure this out. And I said, okay, okay, you know, so I reached out to the designers and I tried to get an answer from them. And then maybe about three hours later, I get a call from the worker saying, I'm still waiting for you. Do you have an answer yet? And I'm like, dude, one of these guys is like in Seattle 
and we're in Hawaii in a different time zone and like the architect didn't even answer his phone so how can I get you the answer? So you're kind of the middleman between the field and all the consultants that you have on the project. And there's also some issues that can come up with ownership and like the developer of the project. So these are the people that give you the job and a lot of times they can be in the weeds of the project or they cannot. But I'll give you an example of a thing that I didn't think I would have to deal with when I signed up for this job. There's a project I was on and when you're kind of towards the end of the project you have this thing called a punch list. The owner will create a list of items for you that you have to fix later on to close the project out. So you usually mark it with some sort of blue tape. In this case, there is little stickers that I had to stick in the corridor of the hallways. So usually we use blue tape or painter's tape because it doesn't ruin the walls. But the owner requested that I take off all the painter's tape and put on this little white sticker that he had because it looked more aesthetic. So I did. And then the very next day, the owner finds out that his boss is coming down. So he tells me, take off all the stickers. We can't see anything anymore. I don't want to see it. And in my head, I'm thinking, why is that my problem? Your boss is coming in. You want it done. You have people in your office that can do this work. But I went and I did it and I climbed up like 40 stories of the building just to take off all of these stupid stickers. What you have to learn is that the reality is that the developers and the owners of the project give you future work. And a lot of times the request that may seem ridiculous to you at the time is actually really coming from like steps above them. So the best thing that you can do is just to support them. As much as you really don't want to, it doesn't help the situation in the big picture for you to fight it. Just something you're gonna kinda have to get used to throughout the process because things like that will come up. Just focus on the work at hand and just focus on helping the guys in the field and helping the project because that, at the end of the day, is the most important thing. And number four, your position is never permanent. Now, I'm not necessarily saying that you're going to get fired at any time, but what I'm saying is that basically, you have a project and that project's only gonna last a certain amount of time, and then you can kind of get fresh starts along the way. So if you have a bad job for like a period of three years, that's only temporary. Whereas if you really hate your job in any other industry, you're kind of stuck. The refreshing nature of going job to job with different team members, different owners, even different buildings, create different challenges and keep things fresh throughout your career. And this works both ways. If you have a bad job, bad team, you have the opportunity to get fresh starts. Whereas if you have a really good job and a really good team, it's kind of sad because you're gonna to have to leave that at some point. But I think that fresh start that you get every few years is really cool and very unique to the construction industry and something that a lot of people may actually really enjoy. So number five, construction is very fast paced. You're going to need to keep up. You're gonna have a lot of crucial deadlines. You're gonna to have to make sure you order your materials on time and you just need to be on the ball. Believe it or not, the big jobs, the big general contractors don't make that much profit on the project. You're talking like single digit percentage of margin on each job. So the faster and the more efficient that you can be on the job, the better it is for the project. And along with that fast paced nature of construction, there are things that just happen on a day to day basis that create like these 911 kinds of calls where you need to figure out your solution immediately. So it's very important that you learn how to prioritize urgency early on in your career so that you don't overwhelm yourself with how quickly everything is going. And so number six, you'll meet a lot of different people. The construction industry is very interconnected and there's a lot of people that get affected by construction. You'll have your internal team on site, then you'll have the workers in the field, you have your subcontractors, you'll have your owner, you'll have your architect, your architect's consultants, and that all far reaches out even further than that to you know hardware stores, suppliers, and even bankers are people that you wanna have relationships with in construction because they can tell you what kind of buildings are trying to get financing so that you can figure out what jobs are coming up. And one thing that I thought was really cool that I didn't think I would get to experience in the construction industry was flying abroad and traveling abroad to check out our suppliers. So I was able to go to places like Brunei and Tianjin, China prior to the virus to double check on the factories there to see they had good quality measures in place for the materials that we were going to purchase for the project. And I was actually very, very impressed that these factories in Brunei and China were very clean, very well maintained and pretty organized. But just again, these are relationships I never envisioned that I would need to make or that I would even have the opportunity to make in this industry. As you can see, construction is a people business, so it's part of your job to maintain and create these relationships with all the people that are on your team. And that perfectly segues into number seven, teamwork is key. If you hate working with people, you hate collaboration, and you think you're the best on your own, do not join construction. You can't build a job of your own and it takes a whole team to finish a project. And I kind of talked about, you know, your collaboration with your own team, with the consultants and with the developer of the project, but you also don't realize that you have to create your relationships and teamwork with like the community around you. When you're building in communities that have people living around you, it's so important for you to make sure that you're not just doing your own thing and like screwing the lives of all the people that are around you. Then again, it's a people business. So you want to make sure that you're building good relationships around you and working as a team to 
to get the job done. I don't think there's anything worthwhile in this world that was built without a team. So number eight, you'll probably be working long hours. Like I said, construction is fast paced, there's budgets to meet, and it's experience based. So the longer you spend on the job, the faster you can accelerate your growth. There's so much planning and coordination that goes into jobs. And since our budgets are so tight a lot of the times, you don't have that huge staff that can just work 40 hours a week and get the job done. Well, that's kind of also why construction tends to pay a little bit better than other industries. Because you're expected to do a little more work to work within your budget and be more efficient. I never find myself staying at work just to stay at work. There's always something to do. There's always something to look forward to. So that's why for me, the long hours don't make a difference. I love what I'm learning and I love progressing in this industry. So if this doesn't sound like you, this is not the place for you to be. In the five years that I've been working, I've never clock watched at work. And that's something that I think you want in your career. Number nine, reading contracts. So you're really gonna have to deal with contracts and that's something that I didn't really foresee when I signed up for this industry initially. And quite honestly, I really thought that being in Hawaii where you know, kind of like everyone's family, there's you know, that aloha spirit around here. I thought that I wouldn't really have to worry about this as much because people would more likely than not honor their word. And I was wrong. I mean, the first three jobs in my career and that's why it's really good that I experienced this early on. Um, I mean, I had people that we would sit in meetings and then you would look them straight in the eye and they would just blatantly lie about the things that they said to you. And when push comes to shove, a lot of people just don't have that integrity to stick with their word. And that's why we have contracts in place. So I honestly don't really like reading, but now that I've gone through that process of seeing how people kind of crumble under the pressure and don't stick to their word, it's made me really understand the importance of understanding the deal that you have with others and make sure that you're contractually covered in all the decisions that you make. It's just like any sporting game, right? Like you wanna know the rules that you're gonna play by before you play the game. You wanna know what kinds of things are okay and what kind of penalties are incurred if you don't follow the rules. And there are some rules that just don't make sense, but a lot of times you'll get held to it regardless. Like the famous catch rule in the NFL. It doesn't make sense, but that's the rule and that's what gets reverted to in the time when a decision needs to be made. And finally, number 10, and I think the real reason why I just really enjoy construction is just the fun and rewarding experience of completing a job and seeing it forever. If you build it correctly, typically the work that you do will stand the test of time. Your work is literally concrete and you can just see it. The results are tangible and everything that you see right there has a story. I think probably the most rewarding job I've done is one of the schools that I worked on because you get to see how the students use the space that you built and it feels just so rewarding that you're part of the process to create something better in your community. Well, thank you for watching. I really appreciate your time and I hope this helped somebody out there that was kind of on the fence between design and construction and maybe helped give you a better mindset about what to expect or maybe it just helped one person get entertained about what construction people do all day. So if you did like the video, please hit the like button subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any videos from me and we can continue growing our family here on YouTube thank you I really appreciate your time and I'll see you on the next video